Hi everybody, Bob Gager from Adobe here with another installment of Ask Bob, where I get to answer questions posed by our Facebook fans. Today's question comes from Karen, and Karen would like to know how to remove the haze out of a scenery shot. Well, Karen, let's take a look. Okay, I've got your photo open here in the Photoshop Elements Editor. Thank you very much for sending it in. It always helps to have real photos that folks are trying to work with in order to understand what issues you're facing. One of the things that I want to do before we get rid of the haze is actually fix this little spot right here. For some reason that bugs me and I want to show you a really quick tip to get rid of stuff like that. And that's the healing brush. Right over here in our tool panel is this little tool that looks like a band-aid. We call that the spot healing brush. Go ahead and click on that. Make sure spot healing brush is checked over here in your tool options and make sure content aware is checked in this type options. And then just come over and use your brush, paint over that little spot, and Photoshop Elements will go ahead and remove it for you. Okay, now that we've got rid of the spot that was bugging me, I wanna see my entire image again. So just come over here in the top left where you have the hand tool, double click on the hand tool, and we'll automatically zoom out and get your photo to fit. So let's take care of that haze. Now there's a couple of different techniques. I'm gonna actually use both of them and combine them to hopefully get some reasonably nice results. Uh, it's not always possible to get rid of all the haze as if it wasn't there in the first place, but we can make your photo look a lot better. So the first technique starts over here in our layers panel. Now, if your layers panel is not showing, maybe your editor looks like this. Down in the bottom along the right uh, are a couple of icons. The very first one is called layers. Go ahead and click on layers and make sure your layers panel is open. Now what we want to do is create a new blank layer. And that's what this little icon right here looks like a piece of paper maybe with a folded corner. Go ahead and click on the create new layer. That's going to create a new blank layer at the very top of your stack. And what we want to do is fill that blank layer with white. So come over here to the paint bucket tool over on the left in the draw section is a paint bucket tool. Go ahead and click on that. Down in our color swatch we want to have white as our foreground color. So if you don't have white there already just go ahead and click these little arrows and you'll get white in the front. And now we want to fill this entire layer with white. So just bring your paint bucket tool over anywhere, click on it, and that's going to fill that entire layer with white. Next thing we want to do is change our blending mode. This little pull down right here normally says normal. There's a lot of really interesting blending modes hidden under there. Now this is not a tutorial on blending mode, so we're not going to talk about all of them. But what I want to do is just get you up here and have you switch to color burn. Now that we've got the color burn selected, we want to come over and get our paintbrush right over here on the left in our draw section. Click on the brush tool. We want to pick a color that's sort of a very light gray. And the way you pick your color is just click on the color swatch. Our color picker will come up and we can pick any color we want. What I want to do for this tutorial is maybe right in there, uh, pick a fairly light gray, not totally bright. Um, but not dark either, somewhere in between. And then click OK. And with this layer one selected, again, that's the new layer we created that we set the blending mode to color burn, we want to start painting with gray. Before we do that, though, we want to make sure we have a soft brush. Click on the brush pull down, and there's lots of different brushes in here uh, from small hard ones, and by hard I mean sort of very, very hard edges through various soft ones. And so you can see sort of these more blurry ones are softer brushes. So we just want to pick a nice soft brush, uh, maybe something like this. We can set our size so that we've got a reasonably large brush and then just start painting over the haze. And you can see as I paint, it gets a little bit darker and brings out some of the detail in our mountains. Uh, we probably want to have our opacity set all the way to 100% just so that we get a nice even painting of gray. Uh, as I move into other areas, you can see it starts to get a little tight. My brush is really big. Just make your brush smaller, drag the size slider down, and then you can start to paint in some of the tighter areas. Let me zoom in a little bit over there so we can see what we're doing. Here we go. Get our brush tool back and just start to paint in that gray on our layer 
right around the trees. We don't want to remove the haze from the trees because there actually isn't any haze there. We just want to paint around the edges. So you can see we'll do that. And right around these trees here. There you go. And go ahead and paint in everywhere. So now I want to make my brush maybe just a little bit bigger. Fill in some of this blank area. And kind of fine tune things a little bit. There we go. So now double click on our hand again so we can see our whole image. Maybe fine tune things a little bit. You can see over here on the right where we have our layer panel. You can see where we've painted gray and where we haven't. So wherever the gray is painted on this layer, because we set our blending mode to color burn, it actually kind of darkens things up and brings out a little bit of detail. And you can decide whether you want to put that on this near mountain or just the far mountains. If you paint an area that you don't really like, that sort of darker, higher contrasty look, we'll just grab your eraser and erase on that layer. And so you can fine tune by painting on with gray or erasing it back out exactly what part of your image has the haze removed and what part doesn't. So let me hide this layer. I hide a layer by clicking on the little eyeball. That's our before and that's our after. You can see our mountain sort of stands out a lot better. Now there's still haze there. It's not perfect, but it's a lot better than it was before. So the next thing we want to do is sharpen things a little bit. I'm going to drag this background layer up to our new layer icon and let go, and that's going to make a copy. Then what I want to do is drag it to the very top of my layer stack. So right on top here, I have that background copy. I have my layer one where we painted on the gray. And then of course I have my original in the background. With this background copy selected, come up to the filter menu, down to the other category, and select high pass. The high pass filter will open up. Uh, you want to adjust this a little bit so that we just kind of start to see some edges of things. So the specific number that you might want to choose is going to vary for your photo. Uh, for your photo here that you sent in, we want to maybe have it around five or six in there somewhere. And just go ahead and hit OK. And now the next trick, again, is in that blending mode pull down. Choose Overlay. And that's going to sharpen things up a bit. You can see it's sharpened our entire image, our rocks, our trees, our mountains. We don't really want the entire thing sharp. We just want the mountains in the background sharper. And that's where layer masks come to life. So this little icon right here is called a layer mask. Just go ahead and click on that, and it creates a layer mask for that layer. And then if I choose black as my painting color, so go grab my brush, make sure my foreground color is black, make sure my layer mask is selected by clicking on it, and then I can paint black. And I'm going to make my brush a little bigger here. And anywhere I paint black, that layer is hidden. So I don't really like the sharpness on the water or the rocks. They're kind of sharp enough already. I don't like it on the trees. They're kind of sharp enough already. I just really want to paint some black on the layer mask for that sharpness layer uh, to get rid of the sharpness where I don't want it and leave it on that background hazy area. So there you go. Uh, I'm going to hold my option key down and click on your background layer. That's what we started with. And with a couple quick techniques, we've been able to bring out the background a little bit better. Hopefully that helps and have fun with Photoshop Elements.